Hey everyone, this is Cindy from The Hair Standard and today we're going to be doing a warm dimensional balayage on someone with naturally very dark hair. Wilma parts her hair off to the side so my mohawk section is right in the middle of where she always parts her hair. And then I'm going to separate the front section where that rectangle section ends and follow down to the ear. My first section is at the neckline and my following section is going to be at the sides and reason is I want Wilma to have the maximum amount of brightness when she pulls her hair up. So I like to tease and then weave a little bit and then start saturating through the ends. My formula for this, for my lightener, is 20 volume to start because it takes me a while to get through all of the sectioning. And then if I do lighten her pre-lightened ends, it's going to be with 5 volume and Olaplex to maintain the integrity of her hair. first sections I get the bottom and also the sides that way when she pulls her hair up she has a lot of brightness around her neckline I am saturating over the top saturating over the bottom making sure that there is a lot of saturation this is my last section I will talk about the placement in a second I like to do a sort of bricklay pattern. I do the middle, then sides, then middle, then sides again. I leave out a lot of dimension throughout the hair. I don't overfoil on the back. And once I'm done foiling the back sections, I'm going to tease whatever is hanging out because Wilma wanted it to be slightly brighter. After I tease, I'm going to paint and the reason why I tease is so that the parts that I'm lightening are still blended into the blonde she still has. Again, I'm using 5 volume with Olaplex and I'm not putting it in foil, I'm just kind of letting it hang out so I can get slightly brighter. It doesn't need to get too much brighter because what we have in the foils is going to be bright enough. The front is the most important because it's the first thing that she sees when you show her her hair. So for my first section, I'm just going to do a regular weaved highlight and I'm going to apply my product really close to her hairline so that she can have the maximum amount of brightness. My next couple sections are teased and I am leaving a little bit of dimension in between. Next I'm going to go along the hairline again and I'm going to highlight close to her hairline, not teasing. That way it's really nice and bright around her hairline. side again starting at the front hairline weave next section will be a teasy light around her ear because this is all connecting the front part is connecting to the sides connecting to the bottom it's all connected it's just slightly brighter along the front in some sections I saturate the ends and other sections I don't. Just use your judgment on the health of your client's hair. 
in person her hair was slightly darker so and also it was healthy so in some sections I did saturate her ends Again, around the hairline, I'm doing a regular highlight followed by another highlight so that it can connect to the dark darker sections. In the top part, I do a lot less dimension because I don't want it to look super stripey. So I do back-to-back -back foils on the top, only leaving out the hair that was weaved out. And then when I'm done foiling, I'm going to tease whatever is left out and paint the ends with the five volume so that her ends can be brightened up. When their hair is processing, I like to continuously check the integrity of the hair and I'm also trying to get her to a level 8 or 9 if possible. Her hair is a natural level 3, so I am happy if I just get her to a level 8. You could see that my product dried up here, so it's no longer processing. Toning is definitely the most important part of the service. You could do the whole sectioning, but if you get your toning wrong, then there was no point to doing all that work. I am doing her root shadow with a level 4 ash so I can get nice and dark and match her natural hair color as much as possible. And on her ends, I'm doing a level 9 gold because I'm pretty happy with how her hair lightened. I'm just trying to get rid of some of the extra brightness so it's not so shockingly yellow. The gold just kind of dims down the extra yellow. Around her hairline, I just slightly tap to blur out um, the highlight lines and... I'm still using the level 4 around her hairline, blending it into the level 9 so that it blends in with her natural color and blends in with the rest. So saturate a lot at the base, drag it down slightly, and then bring in your other toner, apply it right where you finished applying the root shadow. So kind of smudge them together and then pull through with the rest of your level nine gold. When I was foiling, I did my first front foil as a slice so I could be a little exaggeratingly bright. And then I followed with a highlight and then a teasy light throughout the rest of that top mohawk section. Right now, I am just slightly tapping around her hairline so that it blurs out that slice and it kind of blends it into the highlight and then blending it with the rest of my level 9. I pulled my root shadow further down in the back and then just slightly in the front so that it could be brighter in the front and get darker and more dimensional towards the back. Hey, sassy. <laughs> Wilma likes to have a nice golden color. She is tan and she likes her natural skin color kind of popping out. She's comfortable with warm tones and I love when my clients with naturally dark hair like and accept their warm tones because it's only going to keep fading warm. So if you accept the warm colors from the beginning, it's going to look like it's not fading much over time.